One word. Animal Crossing. I mean, what's there not to love? You got animals, you got bugs, you got fish, you got balloons, and most importantly, you got crossing. Ever since 2001, when it was released at the N64, people have loved this game. I mean, uh, okay, so look, the original release for the N64, and people loved that version so much that it got ported to the GameCube later that year, that version got localized worldwide, and is what we know today as Animal Crossing, but that localized version got retranslated back in Japanese, and that version got sold again! And people still bought the game! Why would you buy three copies of Animal Crossing? But why do people love it so much? Well, I think it's down to the simplistic nature of the gameplay. There is no big evil force driving you forward, no world-ending threat like other games. You make progress in Animal Crossing because you want to. You want to see your village improve, you want to better know your villagers, and you want to catch that hammerhead shark, but then you keep getting sea bass instead. Ha 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 ha, sea bass, get it? This lack of a force driving you to make progress, along with the fact that the game runs in real time, really lets you take the game at your own pace and experience it like your own little world, your own town, you could say. And I think that's a genre of game a lot of people enjoy. However, because these events were much more spread out, and since the internet was still in its infancy, even if you played Animal Crossing as much as you could, there was still a good chance you'd miss something. And obviously, this led to a lot of rumours. And so today I felt compelled to take a deeper search into what's really hiding inside Animal Crossing. But where to start? Well, where else better than the infamous iceberg itself? But hold on a second. There's two of them? Yes, today we're not going to be covering just one iceberg, but two. And by the end, we should have ourselves the ultimate Animal Crossing iceberg. Well, that's it for the intro. And we've got a lot of cover today, so where better to start than the tip? KK Swing. While definitely not the creepiest song we're going to be covering in this iceberg, the song definitely has its fair share of spooky elements. For example, the backwards audio used is a little unsettling. Some people have also described the song as being sad or lonely, which I, I fully understand, but personally, I kinda like this song. It do kinda slap though. Tom Nook is a lone shark. I mean, no matter what game you play, Tom Nook is a sneaky little bastard, but in all games, you are in debt to him the second you enter the town. However, I think this theory may stem from something else, in particular the first Animal Crossing, where you had no option to deny a house upgrade, you just have to take it, regardless of what you feel. That definitely feels more like a loan shark behaviour, and I think that's maybe where the theory came from. Mystery of the Snowmen Snowmen are characters who first appeared in Wild World and City Folk. They can be made by stacking snowballs that spawn randomly across your town on top of each other. Once you stack all the snowballs, the snowman is constructed and... Be begins speaking? Does this mean that the player gave life to it? Or is snow sentient? Does this mean they feel pain when you walk on them? Snow is just frozen water, so... Is water sentient? GameCube Gyroid Face Glitch on Animal Crossing GameCube, you can visit your friends' towns by inserting a second memory card into the system. However, if you accidentally reset the console while in a friend's town, your friend's face, no not your friend's, your face, <laughs> will be changed to something much, much creepier. Your face is now the same as the gyroids, which is really eerie, especially on the GameCube. Interestingly, however, this isn't a glitch, but more of an intentional easter egg of sorts left in by the devs to remind you to save. All I can say is if I was a kid and I saw this, I'd shit myself. City Folk Base In Animal Crossing City Folk, on random nights after 8pm, if you travel to the city, the cones blocking the exit may be moved, allowing you to enter a new area. The Rossetti Surveillance Center Inside, you can talk to about Rossetti and his brother Don. 
Their base was also in Dobutsunomori E+, where it could be found randomly when breaking rocks. This surveillance center carried over into future entries as well, being a public works project in New Leaf, but not yet in New Horizons due to the fact that Rossetti doesn't seem to be in the game. Bells are seeds. Bells are the currency of Animal Crossing and can sometimes be found by shaking trees. There's also money trees that can be grown by planting a bag of coins into a golden spot in your town. These trees grow into full trees with bells instead of fruit. That's it. That's all I got for this one. Champ is Porter's brother. Champ is a monkey villager who can live in your town, and Porter is a station worker who runs a train system in most Animal Crossing games. I mean, they're both monkeys, so they, they could be brothers, but it's never confirmed in the games. Eh, but then again, it's never denied either. Isabel is overworked. Isabel is a special dog villager who made their debut appearance in New Leaf. Isabel is a friendly, polite, and hardworking dog and is eager to help the player in any task she can assist with. She works very hard, so it's implied that she's overworked, or at least what the community thinks. Uh, however, she did appear in Smash Bros and also Mario Kart, so I, th I think she's doing fine. Good Soda Gulliver is a special flightless bird villager that can occasionally wash up in your town. He sometimes will mention that, oh god, I was partaking of a bit of the old good soda with me crew when I tumbled over the prow into the sea. This, was that good? This heavily, well, heavily implies that good soda was, an, was alcohol of some sort. <laughs> Pigeon milk. In the Roost Cafe, Brewster will ask the player once milk in their coffee. It, pigeon milk. Hold on. Oh. Oh god, no. Real Mayor. In Animal Crossing New Leaf, the game begins with the player being mistakenly dubbed the mayor of the town. The next day, the player will receive a letter from the actual mayor, who says that one thing led to another, and now it's up to you. We never find out in any of the games who the mayor was supposed to be, but many have speculated. Some suggest it was meant to be Rover, because when he first meets the player, he quizzes them on where they're going, and some have taken this to mean that he's trying to figure out if the player is fit to be mayor or not. While researching, I also saw people saying they remember Rover being worried and flustered about a new job he had, but going back and watching the cutscene myself, I didn't see any of this, so who is the real mayor? Well, we may never know. And with that, we finished off the tip of the iceberg, but if we want real answers, we're gonna have to go a whole lot deeper. Starting off the next tier, just like the last one, with another KK song. This one is leading a lot more towards the spooky side. Uh, the backwards notes really make this one what it is. The whole song sounds distorted and warped, cursed almost, and seeing KK stand in the corner isn't helping. And continuing on from that, we have another KK theory. Uh, KK Slider is always naked. <sighs> Why do I even try? Farley. Farley is a character that appears in Animal Crossing GameCube and only appears at the fountain once the player has a perfect town. He isn't a villager, but more similar to Nook or Cap'n, as in he's a special character. Unlike them, however, exactly what Farley is is unknown, although it's widely believed that he is some sort of troll, goblin, gnome thing. Some also think that his voice is the one heard when you're speaking to the fountain. Serena. Inspired by Farley, Serena is a dog villager who only appears in Animal Crossing City Folk. According to her Wikipedia page, she is a fountain goddess who appears as a statue in the fountain in the city, as well as making a physical appearance in the fountain in the player's town. God, that's a lot of fountains. She upgrades the player's axe for them, but the interesting part is the use of the term goddess. What does this mean? Is there a religion in Animal Crossing? And how powerful is Serena? Where did she come from? This is the only appearance of a god-like figure in the entire series, so it has to bring into question how weird this is. Blanca. Another weird character in Animal Crossing is Blanca. 
She first appeared in Animal Crossing GameCube, where she randomly shows up when visiting other towns. The first time the player meets Blanca, she has no face, and she asks him to draw a new one, which was an amazing character with absolutely no unintentional consequences whatsoever. While any idea and concept, when thinking of Blanca as a character and looking at her face with any drawings, it really gives off an unfinished or spooky vibe. Nook and Red's backstory. Tom and Nook are both shop owners in the Animal Crossing series, but apart from that, they don't have much in common, right? WRONG! While not much is known about Red's backstory, quite a bit is known about Tom Nook's. So, allow me to tell you a tale of the melancholy life of Tom Nook. Tom Nook grew up in a small town just outside the city, and he was best friends with Sable growing up. The two would climb on top of the observatory and spend the night gazing at stars together. A few years pass, and a young, bright-eyed Tom Nook decides to move to the city to become a big entrepreneur. Sable, however, couldn't follow, as she had her sisters to take care of. Tom's time in the city wasn't easy, however, as he encountered a lot of what he calls pitfalls. Despite this, Tom still wrote Sable, telling her all about his experiences in the big city, and every night, Sable would pray for Tom, wishing that he could keep his spirits up while struggling to make his way. Tom's dreams of becoming a big entrepreneur never took off, and he returned to the town a changed man. One of those experiences might have involved Red, as Nook tells the player that foxes can't be trusted, and that working with Red has caused me problems in the past. Red himself is a sneaky art dealer, so maybe he organized some sort of crime, but of course, some fans have decided that a failed romance is what caused the bad bud. As fan fictiony as that sounds, it might not be entirely wrong. As Tom states in Wild World, when referring to his time in the city, yes, I have lost more than just money. I've lost a friend. Isabel is an alcoholic. Okay, so apparently in Japan, Isabel is used to explain the difference between the words whiskey and whiskey, which I don't know about you, but I've been speaking English my entire life, and I never realized there was a difference. Apparently it has to do with where the whiskey is distilled and how it's distilled. Anyways, Isabel also explains how much she enjoys whiskey, which, along with the fact that she works 24-7, may suggest that she's an alcoholic. Timmy and Tommy are adopted. This is more so fact than theory. Tommy and Terry. Tommy and T What the fuck? Timmy and Tommy are the twin apprentices of Tom Nook. Tom explains it to the player that he thinks of them as pupils and himself as a mentor. He, he wants to teach them about good economic principles in order to stop them from suffering like he did as a young businessman. Although not related by blood, some villagers will tell of a rumor that Tom Nook found them in the streets and felt bad for them, so he raised them by hand. Rossetti makes kids cry. This is something that actually happened. Ever since the first uh, game, Rossetti's forceful tone and constant anger has made young children cry. This led to warnings being left in the manuals of Wild World and City Folk, and him being completely optional in, in New Leaf, before being removed in New Horizons. <sighs> Goodbye, Rossetti. You will be missed. Mythological Creature Villagers There's a surprising number of mythological creatures in Animal Crossing. You know, obviously you've got Tom Nook, who's a Tanuki, you got Red, the Kitsune, the you got Cap'n, the Cap'n, then there's the villagers, Drago the Dragon, Phoebe the Phoenix, Hans the Yeti, and Julian the Unicorn, to name a few. All very cool looking villagers, but that's about it for this one. Alien TV broadcast or 3.33 AM. In both Animal Crossing New Leaf and New Horizons, under the right circumstances, the player can find a creepy alien broadcast. The aliens are nowhere to be found in the game except for this message, and although they are probably just an easter egg by Nintendo, what if... what if they real? Source of the Balloons Ever since the first Animal Crossing game, one way of getting items was to shoot down floating gift boxes held up by balloons. But where were these presents coming from? Is there someone out there just packing up couches and floating them into the air? Villagers that aren't animals. There are only a handful of villagers that aren't animals at all, like not even mythological ones. Um, there's Robot and Sprocket, which are both animal-like robots. There's mystical creatures like Farley and Serena, snowmen and spirits such as Jack and Wisp. 
but that's about it. Wanted posters. In Animal Crossing GameCube, at the back of the police station, there's a wanted poster for two individuals. But who are they? They don't look like any villagers? Well, I mean, this one could be an owl, but the one to the right is clearly human of some description. Some think that the owl figure is based on Booster from Super Mario RPG, and when compared, they are similar? The one on the right, however, no one knows. The go-to answer is just a generic Disney mouse character due to the circles above her head, but Nintendo made this game. Why would they include a random reference to a non-obvious Disney character? Personally, I think that it's likely the posters depict other villagers in very generic forms. So for example, I think the left one is maybe an owl villager, and the right one possibly a mouse. Now there isn't a mouse villager with that long flowing hair, but Anacati, Bree, and Brocolo have long enough hair, so maybe it's them? Boondocks. Boondocks is a town located to the north of the player's town in Wild World. The name Boondocks is referring to the word Boondocks, which means an uncivilized, poor area. Pelly or Phyllis will first inform the player of this town and ask them to make a donation. According to them, Boondocksians just eat grilled cheese, but since there's no cheese or bread, they're forced to eat fried dirt without ketchup. After a certain number of donations, one of the pelicans will inform the player that Boondocksians are making a well for mud baths and that tiny Tommy Hicks will finally have a proper fifth birthday. The player will also receive feathers after a certain amount of money is donated. The player can continue donating until Boondocks becomes a thriving city called Boondopolis. You can never visit Boondocks or Boondopolis, however, and it's never shown to the player, so some have come to believe that the town is fake. Along with this, there's also a slight chance that cranky villagers might say they've heard Toromor muttering something like, I'm having a steak tonight, or that he's installing a brand new plasma TV after the player starts making donations. The player will occasionally receive letters from Boondocksians, in one such letter the line, My turtle is better, is used, which could be in reference to Tortimer, as he's a turtle. If that wasn't obvious already. It could also possibly be that Tortimer is taking the money the player donates, and has made up this whole Boondock story. That sneaky motherfucker, I never trusted those eyes. Brutus the Bulldog. Brutus the Bulldog was a supposedly evil villager present in Animal Crossing GC. Unlike other villagers, Brutus would show up in your town for one night, wreak havoc, such as chopping down trees, kidnapping villagers, and then leaving the next night. Brutus was said to be a purple bulldog with red eyes and a black shirt with the letter B on it. He would apparently only speak in binary, and he would completely erase the player's save if you attempted to speak to him, and if you dared enter his house, it would crash the game. There's much more to the Brutus rumour that I haven't mentioned. For example, Brutus was said to do multiple things that mess with you such as sending letters in binary, crashing the GameCube. Some even say he kidnapped your favorite villagers, not just any villagers, and was able to grant bad luck on specific dates. On that date, the player would constantly trip over and get more wasp and trees rather than bells, but there's no evidence of Brutus anywhere, except for one supposed screenshot. It has been lost to the internet, but many disregard this as a hoax. Personally, it gives me similar vibes as Herobrine, that being the early days of the internet when rumours on games were spread like wildfire. Animal Crossing Pioneer Program Coming up to the US release of Animal Crossing, Nintendo held a contest to get people excited about the game's release. You had to fill out a form explaining why you deserve to win in just under 50 words. The players would then get an early copy of the game along with a poster and a letter from Nintendo. In the end, about 125 teams of two won the contest, and received their copies early. The real mystery, however, is what is contained on these discs. Although pioneers have come out and said there is no major differences, that doesn't mean that there's nothing subtle. These copies were sent out about a month before release, and winners had direct contact with the localization team. Now, one pioneer has said that the localization didn't get changed, but I think there might be more hidden on this disc. The problem with trying to find out is that these discs are so rare and are likely never to be sold. But I mean, who knows, maybe Brutus is on there. Bergsala Summer DS I don't know why this is even on the, the iceberg, but if you haven't seen this already, it's these beautiful DS's that were given away as part of a Swedish competition. There were supposedly four of these DS's. We only have photos of the spring and winter ones, however, and I don't know about the summer and autumn ones.
Whoa, slow down there, buddy. Big news, breaking news. We actually just found the Berg Solace. I don't know why we said we on it. Anyways, they, they found the, the Summer DS. It's, it's right here. It's real. <laughs> Strange, because unlike the other ones, which are based on, uh, I think, concept art or something from City Folk and Wild World Art, this one is actually a variation of that and not the same artwork as the rest of them. Which is weird, but when you look at the what the artwork should be technically and what it actually ends up being, it's it's a lot better in my opinion, but we, we fucking have it, it's here. This is this couldn't have been timed more perfectly. Like I'm editing this video as we speak and this just came out, so like Wow <laughs> But yeah, now we have all four DSs and also apparently there was two sets of them because some of the dates and some of the ways people have these DSs don't don't exactly line up. So a lot of people believe that there wasn't just one set of these DSs made, but two, which is really interesting because I would love to get my hands on these someday. They would probably cost me a small fortune, but I, I mean, look at them. They're fucking cool as hell. Ike Village. In Animal Crossing New Leaf, a building called the Dream Suit was introduced. It allowed the player to visit others' towns over Wi-Fi without any other players there. Players quickly began to show off their towns, but one player, Garaku, decided to use the Dream Suite to tell a story. This story instantly became known all over the Animal Crossing community. So now, let me tell you the story of Ica Village. You awaken in a seemingly perfect area with a doll at your feet. Looking around, you're standing on a weird black and white static-like texture, surrounded by trees with perfect peaches hanging from them. There's another person standing with you, a small child wearing all red. Her name? Aika. She tells you, this is inside my dream. Heading north, you are greeted by the first house. Inside, you are presented with the scene of a birthday party. Three people are gathered around a birthday cake. One is Aika, the other two are unknown. In the back of the scene, there is a door blocked off by a drawer that can't be moved. Upstairs, you find what seems to be a play area with three paintings and the same doll you received earlier. These paintings depict Aika's family, one of Aika's family members, and a dog. Continuing over the bridge, the perfect area from earlier begins to change. Bushes are scattered everywhere and there's junk and sweets scattered carelessly across the ground. Arriving at the town hall, you find a picture of Aika's family above a megaphone. Just to the east of that, a graveyard, with each grave filled by a doll. Side note, in earlier versions of Ica Village, there was apparently dog houses accompanying the graves, um, which could suggest that the family member was searching for the dog. However, since it was changed, maybe the developer did that on purpose, so just putting that out there. Further sight, you find the second house. Inside is a maze of green text signs and stools, along with Ica. She says, your voice reaches no one. Taking the right exit, you find a dark room filled with owl clocks taking left and right between two statues, one of an angel and the other a devil. Scattered across the floor are bags of items, red shoes, balloons, as well as a large flower. Taking the left exit, you remember the bright room filled with spinning wheels. In the center is a doll looking over a shark tank with the statue of a woman behind her. The walls and floors of this room are covered with seemingly random patterns. Taking the north exit, you map the dark room filled with stuffed toys facing away from the entrance. You look around to see two paintings of eyes watching over the dolls, ominously. Upstairs, you find an idyllic depiction of the creation of sin from the Bible, complete with a snake and apple. Downstairs, you find a banquet of dolls with a plentiful supply of delicious food. However, looking behind the little red doll, she holds an axe. That is all for the second house. Returning outside, you maneuver through a field of rotten turnips, dead bamboo shoots, and dead saplings. This new landscape is the most similar to the original perfect scene, with water fountains and trees, but this time, they are much less organized, and this is reflected when Aika says, the scenery was always impure. Next, you continue into the third house, and inside, you are greeted by the same doll. This time, however, she isn't holding the axe behind her, but out front and center. She is surrounded by a maze of bookshelves. Inside this maze, you find a portrait of Aika and her family member. On the opposite side, you find a second portrait of Aika, but this time with all of her family. 
Taking the right exit, you map through a rundown room, filled with eggs and a grand piano in the centre. Through the north exit, you find a room with two diaries encased in the middle. Torn out pages are scattered across the floor, and hidden in the corner is a small music box. Continuing upstairs, you find a room filled with furniture, all covered in portraits of Ica's family and family members. The doll sits in silence, staring soullessly into the TV. Downstairs, you find a similar room filled with furniture. The doll is facing a small pram and there's a bed in the centre of the room with an outline on it, marking a dead body. And that's all for House 3. Back outside, you continue upwards to find an area almost identical to the layout of the beginning area. There is much less trash here and all that remains is House Number 4 and Ica. She delivers her final message. This fun dream is soon ending. Walking inside, you present with the same room as the beginning, except now, rubbish is thrown everywhere, and the drawer at the back, which once blocked off an exit, is now moved. Continuing north, you are led into the room containing Ica and a doll trapped in the centre, surrounded by heads, all facing towards them. Upstairs, you return to Ica's bedroom to find the paintings have been changed. Ica has been removed as well as the dog and her family members. The doll is now holding an axe, like we saw in House 3, and all the dolls are facing away. Lastly, you continue down to the beach, where you find a pair of red shoes by the shoreline. Walking back up the beach, we find four leaf clovers. Crossing over the waterfall, we find several offerings left at a grave. Buried within the grave is a skeleton, time capsule, and little red doll. There are many theories about the story of Ica Village, and initially people thought it was very simple, about an evil doll that killed Ica's family, but I don't think the story is as simple as that. Personally, certain details stick out to me and hint at this being much more deep and complex than originally thought. The creator himself has said that there is no true ending to Ica Village, so I'm gonna do a bit of theorizing. Alright, this is off script. I, I'm not I'm not gonna read the script. I have nothing written here. We're going off script for this part. Okay Let's examine the evidence of Ica village. What do we know for certain? Okay First off some pretty big indicators uh, At the end we saw those red shoes by the shore which in Japan is um, Common culture to take off your shoes before committing suicide and since they're next to the ocean it can be implied that somebody killed themselves, and who else wears red shoes but Ica? Okay, well if we presume that Ica killed herself, we have a lot of explaining to do as the hell, how the hell that happened. It's very hard to piece together the first few houses. The first one obviously depicts, you know, a perfect scene. You got her with her family having the birthday, and either she receives this doll or she's had this doll before. Um, but the doll has been there since the start, that's the constant, along with these paintings of, you know, her, her family, and the dog. The dog never really plays a part, so I don't know how crucial the dog is. And since um, Garaku removed the dog houses by the graves, I think maybe he wanted people to stop focusing on the dog. So, yeah, let's, let's take it from that angle. Thinking about house, um, house three, or is it house two? I think it's house two, with all the, with all the, um, Lights. Okay, actually, if we go to the house with the stools and... Um, but then, in the room on the left, you have bright colors, random spinners, the doll looking over a shark with the mother, with a figure behind them. This could suggest panic, and maybe that the red doll could represent Ica, right? Right? Okay, hear me out. <laughs> red doll represents Ica. And in that moment, she's feeling pressured from someone, from an outside source, to make a big decision, right? That means the shark. And all the flashing colors, the spinning wheels, uh, it represents the stress or like panic she was feeling. Again, this you could point this back to the ticking clocks. And then also upstairs with the depiction of sin. Hold on, what's it? The idyllic depiction of creation of sin from the Bible. That also, you know, represents a person making the wrong choice, and down- I think- hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm getting brainwaves. I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Every room in that house is mirrored. 
So the left and right room, they're mirrors of each other. And this makes sense. Like I said earlier, the left room is about choice of a big decision. So is the right room. It's ticking between good and evil, trying to, trying to figure out which decision to make. And all the red represents either Ica or the franticness of trying to decide. Upstairs, you got a creation of the the fucking sin from the Bible, and downstairs, you got a doll about to betray people. It's exactly the same. They're mirrored. I'm a goddamn genius. As for the rest of the village, I, I, I don't know. What's really, really fucking with me is that maze of bookcases. That one's throwing me off. I have no idea what that was about. Um, but I think really, in the end, if I had to sum up everything I've been thinking true, I would say Ica Village is an incredibly well-made fan story. Um, it really gives you a lot to work with, and the fact that the author himself has left the book open, so to speak, it gives the freedom that it has had. I think that's really what made it take off. Why am I saying this? Next, next fucking point! Animal Crossing 2. At E3 2004, Nintendo showed off a video of what would become Wild World. However, the gameplay shown off is much more similar to the GameCube style of Animal Crossing. This is because it was a planned sequel to Animal Crossing that was early in development. We know very little about this game, all we have is E3 footage along with two screenshots, one of the player next to a bell shrine which replaces the wishing well and is the Japanese exclusive, you know, the Butsunomori feature of Animal Crossing. Also Ace and Anakati are shown having a picnic. We know this is a screenshot of Animal Crossing 2 and not the Butsunomori E+, however, because Anakati is using the international symbol for laughter and not the Japanese one. The other screenshots simply show their player by their house with peaches nearby. The game was likely ported to DS and reworked into Wild World, or was simply scrapped in favor of Wild World. Abel's sister's parents. If you remember from earlier, we talked about Tom Nook's backstory. Well, it's time for round two, baby! The clothing shop Abel Sisters was originally run by the parents of Sable, Label, and Mabel, until a fatal accident left the sisters parentless. Shortly after their parents' death, Label and Sable got into an argument which led to Label leaving home for a new life in the big city. Sable was left to raise Mabel all by herself. We also learned that Mabel was too young to even remember her parents or sister Label before she left. Add on to this the fact that Sable's closest friend Tom Nook also left for the big city, and she really has had a hard life. Better, better, but I need more! Keeping with tradition, we have KK Synth. Now, unlike the previous two songs, this one is a lot more electronic sounding, but it still has those creepy vibes, especially with this section right here. I don't know why, but something about this sounds sad or ominous to me. Animal Crossing Cures Depression. I mean, sure, it's a nice, peaceful, slice of life game. Sure, why not? Anti-government Animal Crossing ban. This was really interesting. So during the Hong Kong protests, people would just protest on the streets, but then, you know, the whole, yeah, happened. So they had to come up with a new way to protest and they chose Animal Crossing. People started putting up paintings across their islands with messages like, free Hong Kong, revolution now. All this writing led to the game being banned and taken off shelves in China and Hong Kong. Animal Crossing is a child labor cult. Okay, so this one is like Brutus. It's a rumor that's been floating around since the game's birth and basically states that Tom Nook is using the player and other players to do work for him. He uses bells as currency and puts on a show with villagers and such. However, when researching this, I somehow stumbled upon a fanfiction that takes all these ideas along with some other ideas and combines them all together into this big 15 chapter story, which took me way too long to read. In short, the story revolves around a young happy lad who believes he is going off to a fantastic adventures at summer camp, named Billy. This camp turns out to be Wild World, and when he realizes he can't escape, it suddenly becomes an episode of Survivor and Billy must fend for his life. Gyro has become a center plot point and have some power to turn children into animals. This process is called Animal Crossing. See what you did there.
then yada yada yada, Tom Nook is married to a mouse with cancer, who is now a crazy dictator, and bam, that's pretty much it. <laughs> as much as I am joking, I did actually enjoy reading through it. The creator obviously poured a lot of time and effort into it. I mean, we got fully drawn scenes, audio readings, two endings, and a fully animated fight scene. Summarizing the whole thing would not do it justice, so I'll be doing a live reading of it on stream on YouTube at this date, the date shown above. I don't know when it's going to be, but it should be either the Wednesday or Friday after this is posted, so yeah, there it is. You should come check it out. We're going to have a good time. We're going to read the story. We're going to watch the fight scene. Anyway, speaking of gyroids... Gyroid sounds. Gyroids themselves are weird little statues you can place in your house in all Animal Crossing games. What makes them creepy though are two main things. The sounds they make and the way you get them. Gyroids are primarily found buried underground and some of their sounds resemble drowning or screaming. Gyros are based on figures, which were statues made for ritual use and buried with the dead as funerary objects during the Kofun period of Japan. This could indicate that they mark dead bodies hidden under the Animal Crossing soil, or that they themselves contain the souls of deceased villagers. Animal Crossing is purgatory. This theory suggests that you, the player, are actually dead. Many people regard purgatory as a place of punishment, but Others understand it as a sort of waiting room, a soul stays before entering heaven. It is in the second interpretation that your character resides. You are driven to purgatory by a car or train depending on the game. You take your most innocent form, a child, and are placed in a town populated with cute friendly talking animals, the perfect environment to keep you calm. Your character is clearly unaware that they have died, and this is something your own personal purgatory seeks to hide from you. Why? Because your character is not in heaven yet and isn't safe from suffering heartache and other traumas from the knowledge that they have passed away. This is also why there's so much to do, fossils, fishing, bugs, to keep you from getting bored. Coco and Stitches are dead. Coco is a rabbit villager whose face resembles a gyroid. As previously mentioned, the gyros are based off statues for the dead. Her in-game description reads, she has empty black eyes and a mouth with a hollow head. What? Stitches is another villager with a creepy appearance. She's an orange teddy bear with stitches for eyes and a body made up of fabric. Both these villagers look as if they're dead, and according to their descriptions, I guess they are! Dodos. If you didn't know, the dodo is an extinct flightless bird that was endemic to the island of Muartis, east of Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. But you see, in Animal Crossing, there's a dodo villager. Ooh. Tortimer is a puppet figure. I don't know what they mean by this. Like, maybe this is in reference to another theory on the iceberg that Tom Nook is behind everything, as in Tortimer is just a puppet for Tom Nook to use. But I did find this cool little figure of Tortimer on Pinterest, so uh, <laughs> you can call me an investigative journalist. Frillard passed away. Frillard is a special character that was first introduced in City Folk, where he appears in the marquee, taking Dr. Shrunk's place on rare occasions. In one of these performances, we learn that he's 110 years old. This wouldn't have meant much until the New Horizons Direct came out. In that trailer, people spotted a gravestone in the background, and speculation went wild. Originally, people thought it might be Tortimer or Joan, since she was replaced by Daisy May. However, by the game's release, both these options were ruled out. Frillard, however, never appeared in New Horizons, meaning the grave could belong to him. Haunted Paintings In Animal Crossing New Horizons, Red will arrive on your island and sell you paintings. However, not all of them are real. Now the only way to tell the difference is to have a PhD in art history, oh, or I guess you could buy it and, and interact with it. Yeah. Some fake art acts weird and has been deemed as haunted. For instance, a portrait may open its eyes or a statue may float. These oddities only appear when interacting with the object at night, however. One of the creepiest examples, in my opinion, has to be the back of the graceful paintings, in which you can see a human shaped stain, as if the canvas itself is possessed. Humans are second class citizens. This could be in reference to two things. One is the fact that you can buy a human skeleton, uh, but this skeleton is much too tall to be the same as a player's. 
meaning the player isn't human. Also, we never see a character whose description fits the skeleton, so where these came from is a mystery. Maybe the human skeleton is similar to dinosaurs in the fact that it's a fossil now. Or if we assume the player is human, then it might be the fact that Tom Nook charges the player for their house and has to pay off constant death, unlike other villagers. Ho 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 baby, now that was a good lair. But I still have questions, and there's only one place left to go. You heard me right, baby, we're heading right down to the underbelly. KK Dirge. And finally, the creepiest Animal Crossing song of all, KK Dirge. Right off the bat, dirge means a lament for the dead, especially one forming part of a funeral rite. So, no subtly here, this is just straight up a song for the dead. Way to be subtle there, KK, way to be subtle. Listening to this song, it starts out with nothing but a single note for the first two seconds, before being accompanied by what sounds like deep harmonic chanting. We then hear some electronic sounds and a busy sound that constantly grows louder until peaking and fading away. The song appears to continue on normally, but is suddenly interrupted by two clashes of a metallic object. Followed by someone holding a low note. And then, the song repeats. This is definitely the creepiest KSA song and gives off cult vibes. The chanting, the ominous sounds, the clashing of metallic objects makes it seem to me at least like some sort of execution or ritual. Creepy Kurlos Dialogue Kurlos is a villager first introduced in Debutsunomori E Plus as a cranky islander. His personality type changed in New Leaf to Smug, fast forward to New Horizons, and there's a chance that Kurlos will tell you about his workout mishap in his basement, commenting that Nobody can hear you scream from your basement. This is an incredibly creepy line to leave into an Animal Crossing game, especially from one of the villagers. The thing is though, this isn't exclusive to Curlos. This dialogue option can be said by any of the smug villagers. Why would they include this? And why is it every smug villager? Do they all just have a basement that nobody can hear them scream from? Oh shit, that's a theory in itself. Zipper T Bunny. Zipper is a really weird character in Animal Crossing. Unlike any other villagers, Zipper actually has a zipper on his back. It's where he gets his name. He gets aggressive if the player mentions it and denies that it's a suit. However, this has just made more people theorize that it is a suit. But what might be underneath? Well, something is Phyllis due to their shared habit of making a size in grayed out text and how much they dislike their job. However, Phyllis and Zipper can be at the same place at the same time, so that pretty much deproves that theory. Others think it's Tortimer, but he can be disproved the same way. Maybe there's something much darker under that bunny suit. Maybe Zipper is in fact some sort of horrific monster or creature. Or possibly another player, just like you. Gulliver is a failed murder victim. Gulliver is a flightless seagull villager that's found washed up on your shore randomly. He explains that he fell off a ship and his crew is dismissive of him. This could suggest that he didn't fall, but was pushed overboard. New Leaf 7pm Negative Aura This one also talks about negative aura and wet dry where I mean 7pm music in, in New Leaf, yeah. Personally, I don't feel it, I don't hear it, but I mean I kind of understand what they mean. The repeating sounds, the clip plop in the background could give it that vibe, but look at any other song from New Leaf. They all start to repeat. Those songs are just drag out over an hour, so I don't really feel the negative aura here. Tell me if you guys do. Wisp's Master. Wisp is a special spirit character who's a simple white ghost, roughly the same height as the player. What he was before he became a ghost is unknown and up to speculation. When Wisp arrives in the player's village, they must cash spirits with their nest for a reward. Wisp said he works for an organization, and will mutter something about a master and what he will do if his spirits aren't recovered. Little is known about Wisp's boss, other than that he's a very scary person whom Wisp is afraid of. He appears to be violent, beating Wisp up after he fails to return the five spirits in, oh god, Hoinda Mura Deori, the Animal Crossing manga. 
Chestnut. Chestnut is a beta character in Animal Crossing GameCube. She can only be accessed by using an action replay code. She appears as a squirrel with blue eyes and a turquoise dress. Digging around the code, we find that her texture and model refers to her as XSQ, which likely means extra squirrel. However, in the game's code, she is called ACEV Dokutu. That can be broken down to Action Event Dokutu. Characters with EV in their name are traveling characters like Crazy Red, Sahara or Joan, Dokuto. Do Dokuto? I I'm just gonna keep butchering it over and over again. Most likely a shorthand for Dokutoru, which means a doctor in Japanese, as strings before her name in Dokutsu no Mori Plus include sick and patient. These things point to her being a traveling doctor of sorts. She may also have healed a player if they happened to get stung by a bee on that day, since medicine wasn't introduced until Wild World. She was likely cut though due to uninteresting or useless mechanics, or just time constraints. Beta items. Oh ho ho boy, it's time for the beta items! They my favorite part! There's not a lot of cover, so... Let's go. Cat 13. Cat 13 is a dark brown cat with tan question mark stripes on her forehead. Apart from her appearance, we know nothing about her, likely due to cut time or time constraints. That's the same thing. Or replaced by any of the hundreds of other cats. Blue fish. Blue fish is a beta item. It's just a simple blue fish with a hook and a slip, likely used while programming fishing. Dummy is a beta item that takes the form of a white triangle with, ja with red Japanese fucking characters in the center. When placed, the character reads dummy. This item can't be sold or seen in the catalog. This is considered to be either a glitch item or a tool for testing furniture. Weirdly, and I imagine an accent, you were able to get this item without hacking or modding the game. For some reason, you could obtain dummy in two ways: by talking to a villager inside the igloo through specific conditions, or as a reward for the picking two cards game. You can also get a form of dummy in City Folk, where it appears as a regular apple. Glowing yellow boxes. This is a beta item, only accessible via cheats. Once placed, this box won't appear it, until you reload the zone. Once you return, the box will appear and begin moving side to side. It has physics attached to it and can push the player around. What the hell this is used for is unknown. Paper Airplane. Paper Airplane is a beta item only accessible through cheats. It appears in a buggy state as a type of paper. When placed on the ground, it is visible, but just like the glowing yellow box, it too reappears once you reload the zone. Jesus! It also has the weird ability of duplication and potentially shut down entire acres or even leave your entire town unplayable if you leave it duplicate enough. Sickle. The sickle is an unused beta item only accessible via cheats. It was never completely finished but does appear in the player's inventory as a net. When equipped it appears as if the player is holding nothing but acts like you were not holding a tool. This item also apparently appeared in Animal Crossing Guide? I don't know what the hell Animal Crossing Guide is, apparently it's a guide from the original GameCube, who knows? And that's all the beta items. I got all of them done. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So they straight up just have the Wii U game at the very bottom of the iceberg. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I really show with people like that game. The Night Clowns. No. Hold on. I think we finally reached it. The answer to a question I've had ever since the start. All right, I can finally know what the night clowns are. Now, what are night clowns, you may ask? Well, have no fear, young viewers, for the creator of the iceberg, username for username himself, gives us an explanation. New Horizons released in a new era of video games that tend to be more in tune with internet culture. As such, New Horizons has some slightly off-kilter dialogue that aligns more closely with oddball humor often found on the internet. Blah, blah, blah. No one could hear them scream from the basement. Oh, here it is, here we go. Well, sometimes, if you convince a character in your campsite to replace a villager in your town, the former will mention that the other was already thinking of moving out. Why? Because of the night clown. Now, you may say, what? Night clowns? Yeah, night clowns. Do they explain the night clowns? No. And I have to emphasize this. No, they do not. No one talks much about the night clans. But they are enough to motivate a villager to move out once the opportunity arises. This baffles players to this day, who have to ask, do the night clans have any connection to Pierto? And what are the night clans? The fact that this question is unanswered to this day makes it so much worse. Maybe you second thoughts of playing at night, among other things.
Perfection. Utter perfection. This is the best theory I've ever seen in my life. I finally know what night clowns are. I've never been so happy. Well, that's all she wrote. It's been a journey and we are finally, conclusively, done. Holy shit, this has taken a long ass time to make. This took a lot of effort to make from a lot of different people, so if you enjoyed, I really would appreciate a like and maybe even a subscribe. Uh, originally I was gonna say that we're almost at a thousand subs and try to get you to subscribe, but we somehow hit that milestone while I was recording this script, which is fucking insane. I just want to say thank you to, you know, all my fans already, which I'm gonna keep that brief because I have a lot more shit planned for that, for that whole celebration thing. I'm definitely thinking of making more of these. It took a long time to record the script and even researching. Researching took the longest time. Like, I've already pretty much recorded the entire script in just two days. It took me like the better part of a month to research it. So if you have any more ideas in the comments, leave them below. I have a few myself, this uh, Super Mario Sunshine one looks decent, also if I can find one on Pikmin or Smash Bros, I think that could also be pretty good, but you guys know better than me, leave it in the description. And also, just before we finish, do not forget to come out to the, to the live stream at this date and this time. I don't know when that date and time is going to be, but it's probably soon, you should come check it out. It's going to be great, going to have some friends on, we're going to read through the... Um, through the the terrible secret of animal crossing which i it's a pretty good story so hopefully we'll have some fun with that um we're also going to be doing some fuck we're also going to be celebrating a small bit because a thousand subs so you know come check that out if you want to anyways i really do hope you enjoyed thank you so much for watching hope you have a great fucking day and bye When, when equipped, when equipped, when equipped, when equipped, my God! Upstairs, you find an idyllic depiction of the creation of sin from the Bible. Ew! Upstairs, you find an idyllic depiction. Idy How the fuck do you say that word? Oh my God! It's here in my script like fifty times. How do I say it? How do I say it? Idyllic. 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 Yeah, fucking teach me how to pronounce Idyllic. it, Google. How am I gonna how am I gonna end this video?